Hi guys, I'm Sophie. Uh, Tanya's asked me to do a video, like a day in life thing, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to start today. I'm a farm animal vet. I graduated Nottingham University July, <laughs> July 2019. Started working September 2019. So being a farm animal vet in clinical practice now, just over 18 months, about 18 months. 100% farm animal, technically. I say technically, because I will look at non-production animals. So I'm quite happy to go and see the alpacas. Uh, quite like a goat work. And um, backyard chicken work seems to be my thing as well. Mostly because I have backyard chickens. Uh, 15, 16 years of them, you tend to see more of the common and uncommon stuff. So yeah, throw your chickens at me. Quite happy to see them. <laughs> um, I'm going to start filming today. It's Wednesday, so no TV testing. Um, currently not massively busy. Really, shouldn't have just said that. Should not have just said that. That's my turn. <laughs> currently, um, I have to go look at some calves that I look at whenever I can in the week, uh, just to get some data on them. I'm also on call tonight, so we will see what occurs, but I'll take you with me and let's have some fun. So, when I originally said my day today looks quite quiet, I um, already got my first call in. Off to see a calf with pneumonia. Um, acute pneumonia by the sounds of it, not too sure what we'll find, but yeah, off to that, um, kind of need to leave, so not getting a coffee this morning. <laughs> right, so that calf, um, just a really cute, acute pneumonia, bless her, she um, was fine yesterday, so yeah, treat accordingly. Um, anti-inflammatories, um, bloop, antibiotics, <laughs> and then also I drenched her, oh, let me turn that down a bit, I drenched her um, three litres of um, rehydration fluid. She wasn't actually dehydrated, but it's just nice to do, especially if they're going to not suck for a few hours as well, so yeah, she had that too, and now I've not got anything else currently, so I'm going to go and take some data on the calves. That I was mentioning a bit ago. Um, basically, what I'm doing with the calves is I'm working quite closely with the farm. Um, I collect data from them, all different sorts of data, and trying to develop a program or something like that. So it's basically a fitting job. So I fit it in whenever I have time off, normally on a Wednesday, but yeah, could be any day if I'm busy on a Wednesday. But I'll explain more about it um, when I get back to the office later. So when I go on farm with the calves, I am collecting blood from them to look for total protein, which is colostrum transfer. I also weigh tape them, um, which gives me a weight and height approximately for them. I put them into this spreadsheet I am creating. So I have all their numbers, um, birthdays, date of, of recording, and then you know weight, height, total proteins, and then anything else, illnesses, scour, lameness, anything I want to include. I also write other info down, which I need to fill in a bit at the moment, but that's all about what sort of colostrum they've had, things like that. And then I've created this table at the moment, which basically tracks me through their age and, their age and gives me a growth rate. And then I can go across for different ages, expand it out, do whatever I want so I can look at first seven days, you know, growth rate over the first three weeks, all that sort of stuff. So this farm I'm checking data from, um, they have a lot of calves coming through. They also have pretty good calf health. They've had quite a lot of specialists in the stuff in the past. But there's a few things that they've sort of not quite been hitting despite putting in a lot of effort. So the whole point of this is a symbiotic relationship. That's the word, isn't it? Where I'll get a lot of data and hopefully create something for work. Uh, and hopefully they'll get something out of it as well. Um, actually, so far we've already sort of corrected their costume. Um, we are trialling jackets there to see if it's cost effective for them to buy the jackets because they're thinking about it, but obviously it'll be quite a bit of a cost. And I'm also sort of switching up with vaccinations at the moment to see if a vaccination will work better on their farm for pneumonia. So we're sort of trialling separate um, groups on different vaccination protocols to see how that happens. I also like to do a bit of cost, um, cost crunching. So I'm looking at their milk powder at the moment, thinking about changing it a bit because under three weeks isn't, 
brilliant the growth rate compared to what they could be getting. So looking at that, looking at concentrate numbers, I will probably also, if they have anything die, have a look at room and papillae growth so we can relate it back to concentration, um, some concentrates and stuff like that. So this farm it's worked really well on. Um, yeah, it's really good to see the changes made based off of data and actual fact and adapted to their farm. So I'm working really closely with them. And it's actually, I'm it's really hopeful. I'm really enjoying it. Really hope that I create something that the rest of our clients can use, to be honest, because it's actually quite rewarding, I think, for them and us. And to look at the calves and see real good quality, fast growing, healthy calves. <laughs> Right, I need to start messing around and crack on. <laughs> um, going to a carving now. Um, actually, from my neighbour. Um, he's an old bloke, bless him. Um, got some like older beef animals. Got quite a bit of help, but I think he's just rung up saying he's on his own. The cow's carving, um, and it's coming backwards. So get there and see see what we have. Um, be my f it, well, I've known him my whole life, and it'll be my first carving for him. So I'm really excited about this actually, um, and I hope it'll be a fun one. Knowing him. It's probably not going to be your standard little rearranging pool. I reckon it's going to be a good, good one. So we'll see. <laughs> I did not realise I had all of this crap on my face. The show she bought that carving was like, oh, and that's all crusty as well too. God, I am a picture of finesse, me, aren't I? Um, that carving, yeah, that was true breach presentation. So just a tail tail um farmer nailed it spot on he's 85 bless him on his own she was like yeah just got the tail water bag wasn't even broke so um you know she hadn't pushed really at all the, the cow but yeah they're hard because you've almost got to push the ass up of the calf and flip the legs up at the same time this one's legs were really fully out as well so i could only just reach the hocks so a lot of times they're easy to just season them especially if the calf's alive but that farm is just you know, it guys um old he's on his own it's just not really where you want to season and the cow's fat so yeah cracked on got the calf out fortunately it was dead been dead six twelve hours but the cow's doing well so So yeah, the time is now two o'clock. Yeah, two o'clock. Um, so yeah, considering I was meant to have a quiet day, it's not been, but that's the best thing about being a vet. You don't know what's gonna happen, especially at springtime. Um, so my plan of action now is to go back to the reception, help them there, and also try and do some of the growth rates, bring a few farmers back, any other call that comes in, and then I'm on call tonight, so yeah. Who knows? <laughs> right, so in the office, um, I'm going to a few farmers, change the jumper so I no longer sink, and I'm going to check you through some blood results now. So what I've been doing on one farm, um, I think this is quite a good thing to do for if you want to talk to you all about it. I take bloods from twins and triplets, I make it across. And then we basically look at energy levels, magnesium, things like that. Anything that is a precursor to twin Lyme disease, basically. Yeah, I do an extended profile, and then it gives you albumin, protein, magnesium, calcium, urea, BHB. So BHB there. BHB is um, one of the key ketones to measure. It's basically an, an indicator for negative energy balance, or if the ewe isn't getting enough energy with the lambs inside. So all of these are fine, apart from this one here. She's sort of rising. Um, she could be at risk. If I look along, the urea is fine. Um, we look at her calcium, her calcium is a bit low as well. I look across and she's a triplet, um, an old ewe who's going to lamb early, so she's quite far through rearing those animals. So basically, looking at that, it's pretty good. Um, his albumin levels are slightly um, lower than ideal, but they've been dealing with fluke, so that's not really surprising. Um, that's all cleared up now, so we just have to wait for the albumin to rise. But other than that, they're pretty spot on, which is really quite good. When we do this, and I quite like this, is basically you can prevent twin lamb from all occurs. So this year, obviously doing quite well, last year they were all over the shop. We, in the end, we actually had to have the triplets on twice the amount of concentrates on this year. So yeah, it can be really year dependent. So we try to do this sort of six weeks before lambing, take a good spread, have a look, and then we can make management changes and adjustments 
and the idea is you completely prevent twin ram so you pick it up here and it's subclinical um adapt as possible and then the idea is you have no twin lambs so no risk of dead lambs like to abort lambs no risk of dead you and the cost of this is pretty much yeah so, yeah the cost of this is less than the value of one call you so to me it's absolute no-brainer um i think it's a really good really proactive thing to do a lot of people don't do it but something to think about right farmer just rang in he's got a cow that is constantly seen bullying but wants a scan before he just jabs her so off to do that um and yeah see what's next Whew, bit of a wet one that <laughs> um bang on the money there cow is cystic he just wanted to check before he injected her so yeah bang on um took a picture of her cyst view it was a big one really good and she also had an abscess and i just oh one of the favorite things for vets to do is burst an abscess so burst that one out flush that caught a little bit of it on video i think but yeah oh ultimate satisfaction um and now i've just had a call come in um i'm the on-call vet tonight so i'm just gonna go and see that it is rip deer i don't know too much about it at the moment um lovely owner they're quite sort of pet animals so we'll rock up and see what they are i have no idea to the extent of the rip but we'll see what it is when i get there oh <laughs> yeah not too bad that last time i went to an ear it ended up being literally the back of the ear half cut through so that one was quite nice uh just a small little nick kind of in like a triangle um i didn't take a before picture actually but yeah she sort of nicked it in a triangle with a bit hanging um not too bad really but the owner was just worried that she'd catch it and rip the end and she was just a bit concerned about her doing that so put a few stitches in and job's a good one That is me done. Well, not done. Done for my day job. Um, I'm on call tonight. So if anything comes in, I will take you with me, let you know if I can, hopefully. But hoping for a quiet night. Um, probably will, dare I say it. We just have four calls coming at once um, when I was at that ear. So bless the rest of my team. Um, they all picked up one each. So they finish it all round. Um, but sometimes that's how betting goes um brilliant to have a team that do that for you but yeah hope you enjoyed um my day <laughs> now i've done a bit of beautifying now i'm just joking i haven't bothered to brush my hair since it's dried anyway we're gonna rock this um <laughs> i've been asked to do a little bit about myself as well for you guys um sorry just unrolling my top it's right looked up <laughs> Um, about myself, being a woman in the industry, how I got into it, blah, 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 blah. So let's start with how I got into it. Um, nobody knows. <laughs> no farming in my family whatsoever. Um, Dad maybe worked on a chicken farm when he was 14 for like a year or two, but that's about it. I came home from nursery one day and was like, going to be a vet. And my dad was like, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, she doesn't want to be a princess. She wants to be a vet. Isn't that lovely? And then I just stuck with it, supposedly. Um, did look up a career, choices, Especially, you know, I got towards sixth form and I was getting good grades and things because, you know, you can't just live your whole life saying you're going to do this. You should look at other avenues just in case. Being a vet isn't for everybody. It's not an easy job. Um, I know I make it look like it's all great sometimes, um, but it's not, and I do try to show the, the ins and outs of it. Um, so yeah, I looked at other things, but you know, I wanted to work with animals, really interested in farming. I think, to be honest, I, if I was part of the farming family, probably would have still gone to vet school and got the degree, but I would, farming it was like my main passion. I really wanted to be a farmer, but um, yeah, that wasn't really an option. So I went along with vetting and knowing that it would let me work with animals. And yeah, got a degree. Not gonna lie to you, vet school is hard. It is hard. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a vet when I graduated. 
I, I, yeah, I spent all this time wanting to be a vet, wanting to be a vet. Getting into vet school is really hard. Um, so I was probably, I was thinking of 120 or so places when I applied and over 2,000 applicants. So yeah, it's hard to get into. Like, I'm not going to lie, it's not a walk in the park, it's not write a personal statement and then hand it in and that's the job done, you know, it's a lot of effort, got to do a lot of work experience, you've got to, it's not just about grades, it's about who you are, what you do, and you, you can't just have good grades to be a vet, you have to have something extra, you have to do other things, and you have to show, like, like dedication, and you have to get the experience behind you as well, um, learning a book doesn't make you a good vet, having experience and the ability to adapt and overcome and things like that, that's what makes you a good vet, so vet schools are looking for that now, um, just getting good grades isn't good enough anymore, which I think is a good thing, I do think it's a good thing because, you know, there's a lot of things that you meet when you're a vet that you can't learn in a book and there's also a lot of times where you're in such high stress, high pressure, you know, you've got to be able to think clearly and think level-headedly, so yeah, I think that is important, I can't look it off the topic there. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure when I finished, uh, fifth year if I wanted to be a vet. So I was like, if you've got a degree, do it, try it. You can always not be a vet if you want to be. Um, but I've got the right job for me. I absolutely love it. Um, brilliant, brilliant job. But obviously there's a high dropout of vets as well. Um, in the first sort of four years, really high to drop out of vets. So it's important getting the right job. But it's also important if it's not for you, you're not a failure for giving up and putting yourself first, it's not an easy job. And I think the problem is, is sometimes it can be looked at as, oh wow, like, oh, they work with animals, oh, it must be brilliant. But it's an awful lot more than that. So, yeah, that's about betting, I think. Done! <laughs> um, another question, or next question, was regarding being a woman as a farm vet. Um, in what people I think often call a man dominated world, which I guess, yeah, there's more male farmers than female farmers, but I think that's changing. And I know some badass women farmers, but I think man, woman, this is, this is, I can only speak from my own experience here as a woman in a man dominated field or whatever it, you know, people call it. Um, to me, gender is irrelevant. So, I can honestly personally say I have never experienced sexism on farm. And I think, yeah, maybe I am lucky with regards to that. Um, and obviously I've only worked in one practice and we have a lot of female vets. So I walked into a maybe an easier situation. I don't know. But as I can say, I can only speak from my experiences. And so to me, working in agriculture or working as a farm vet, Gender is irrelevant to me. Um, and I say that as in, I think a lot of people, especially a lot of um, female vets going through vet school, get worried about not having the strength um, or not having the size or the stature or something like that to be a good farm vet. And being a good farm vet or being working in agriculture is to me personality and mentality. So you have to have grit and tenacity it is hard, it is tough, you have to be able to do that. Compassion, like you, you know, you're going to see some things, you've got to be there for the animal, for the client. You you can't let compassion get on top of you to the point that upsets you every day, but you have to be able to deal with their emotions and, and be part of the emotions. You are part of the experience at the end of the day. And also an outlet. You know, as I said, you see things, it's hard, it's tough. You know, you're often isolated, especially working in agriculture um, and what we've happened with COVID and that now. So you need some sort of outlet that just gives you time away from the job. But yeah, I'd often say to students and that, you, you don't have to be the strongest or the biggest. You just got to be the smartest. <laughs> and I mean that as in that cliche thing, work smart, not harder. So brute strength will only get you so far. If you can go on assess the situation, adapt to the situation, make practical changes and make it work, that's the true skill. You don't need to be able to lift a 200 kilo animal. You don't need to be able to flip a calf inside the uterus. You know, 
you have tools, you have ability, you have people. And um, what you do is you all work together. It's not about being the strongest anymore. It's about making the situation work and finding the best outcome. And saying that, if you're still worried, I work in a female orientated practice. I am the tallest female in our practice and I have the biggest hands. <laughs> and they are all miles better vets than me. They, uh, some of them are five foot five, kick ass vets. Farmers want them, you will be wanted. It is not, uh, it's not about gender, you know, anymore. It is not about size, stature. It's about your ability to talk to the client, adapt to the situation and make it work and get the best outcome. Doesn't matter how you get to that outcome, it's about getting that outcome. So don't let it put you off, honestly. Don't let it put you off working agriculture, don't let it put you off being a farm vet. If those days are changing, so go for it. If I can make it work, <laughs> a girl from absolutely no agricultural experience didn't get me first set of waterproofs till I think I was 17 and if one farmer bought me my bottom, one farmer bought me my top, I used to go lambing in bright pink floral baggy leggings and I used to hold on to the leg of a ewe and she would drag me around the place when I was 15 years old and I just thought I ain't letting you go you know tenacity grit stubbornness things like that yeah if a farmer sees that in you and sees you're trying your best they will not care whether or not you can hump some hundred or so kilo animal over a gate all they want is a situation fixed and the best outcome possible for that situation. So yeah, that's what I have to say <laughs> with regards to my view on gender. Um, I hope it doesn't offend anybody, but I can only speak from my own experiences. So give it a go. Don't let it hold you back. <laughs> so yeah, I think that is me finished filming for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you can deal with my madness. <laughs> I try to tone it down a little bit when I'm filming, but um, I hope you can deal with a bit where I'm very tired during filming. I think you'll see which bit I'm like oh, on. But yeah, um, watch it, enjoy it. Brilliant career, um, really, really good career. Just make sure if you're a student and that, you find the right job. Um, I know people can get stressed about that, but find the right job. Don't just find the first job and you'll fly. You will fly. So. Over and out, guys.